From In the Beginning to the Musical Apocalypse, this is The Bible Says What. I'm your host, Mike Wiseman. Words flowing, appearing across the screen. My fingers and my brain working in unison to put forth the message I wish to convey. Religion is poison. Trump is a divisive, self-centered prick and the McRib is overrated. Beware of those who claim to have the answer in the form of an ancient book. Worry less, love more, and forgive often. Life's too short to worship anything or anyone, especially an invisible child-killing monster that demands glory and praise. Fuck that. Be yourself. Live free. Enjoy your brief moment in time because this is all you're getting. Let's start the show. Is there anything in the Bible that you yourself have an issue with? (laughs) Okay, so it took you reading the Bible to realize that those things were bad for you? Yeah, it actually did. I I didn't figure this out on your own? No, Ted, Ted Bundy could be redeemed. God doesn't kill children. That, what, what do you think the Passover was? Yahweh sets up a whole system in the Old Testament where you slaughter animals just so he's able to forgive you. Today's special guest is the founder of Blind Faith Ministries. Welcome to the show again, Eric Porterfield. Thank you. It's so good to be back with you, Mike. I appreciate you having me back on. Yeah, yeah. You sent me an email saying you were thinking about me, and I was like, oh, that's sweet. And uh, I was like, well, you know what? Let's have him back on, see if we can carry on a conversation again. And uh, here we are. So thanks for coming back. Appreciate it. How'd you feel about your first appearance? Um, I enjoyed, obviously, the the interaction and always get, you know, always a privilege to me to get a tell people about the Lord and where we're at on things. And, and with the title of your show, obviously, uh, well, the Bible says what, uh, coming into it, not knowing you, uh, and then getting an, an overview of who you were. Uh, I just, uh, I felt like there was some robust debate and, hmm. you know, I hope, I hope there was some things to chew on that, that yeah. we were able to give to you. And there's some things we've obviously thought about and, I enjoyed getting to meet you and you know, one of you and your family. Was hoping you guys had a great holiday and yeah. enjoyed being with you and look forward to being back with you and hopefully get there's you know, there's some subjects that we can go mm-hmm. over that can be yeah. helpful or encouraging and even if there's even if there's difference on them that there still can be difference on things but uh people can be civil with each other, agree mm-hmm. to disagree and I, I think what we've seen in our modern time unfortunately especially from a political context, sometimes it pushes in a spiritual context, is that people just disagree, and I think you and I would be polar opposites on a lot of things, but mm. I don't think that we have a, a hate-filled relationship, and hopefully that's encouraging to other people that, you know, getting your point across, and if you walk away, and, you know, from, from my position, people don't come to the knowledge of trusting Christ as a true and living God for salvation, that you pray for them, you love them, you know, they, they don't have to be your utter enemy personally, you know, and hmm. and never by coercion or, you know, twisting of arms is it ever what the Lord wants to, you know, bring people to him. It's a submission of the will, and if people make a decision not to do that, they're free moral agents to do it, and you just hope on the other side of it that people let you do that and live for the Lord in peace and not try to not try to push you in your ideology that because you're you're different or disagree with them that uh you know you're, you're someone that you know should be you know troubled with hate and mm. you know oppression and those types of things so that's mm. that's what I took away from and this guys that had totally different mm. ideas uh, about life and total idea different ideas about eternity but still managed to seem to have a pretty decent rapport. And hmm. if I took away that from that, something I wasn't supposed to, you can correct me <laughs> on that, but that's that's what I took away from it. So no, you, I'm glad no, to be it, back I, with you today. I agree, actually. You know, we, we do differ on quite a few things, uh, but we can still have that civil conversation, and, and, and that's what I love. I love being able to have that conversation and be able to, to pass ideas back and forth. Um, I think it's important, definitely. Um, 
to talk instead of just accuse and and be hateful towards each other for sure um but you know again there is a point to where um you know <laughs> i'm not i'm not afraid to punch a nazi you know <laughs> There's that, there's that, that fine line, you know, there, there is a point, but, uh, for sure we, we've, we've gotten along and today we've, we've chosen the topic of, uh, prayer, which is a very interesting topic to me. And I'd love to get more of your opinion on it. Uh, just today I was on Twitter doing my thing and I noticed, well, I noticed this a lot, but today, especially a lot of people asking for prayer warriors. Um, have you heard of this term and what do you think of it? Sure. Um, I think when exercised in its proper context, it's as powerful as a weapon in the spiritual uh, spiritual life. Hmm. And I want to make sure, especially you know, with the reference you've made to a group that I feel are very, very, very brutal people, the, uh, the Nazi regime, that when I say weapon, I mean that to fight against things that trouble you. Uh, when you have people that are prayer warriors that are going, you know, to the true and living God on your behalf, and that he hears and answers prayer, that it can protect you from you know, a lot of a lot of ills. It's helped the sick to recover. Hmm. And the prayer of faith, I believe, is what brought me salvation. And there's a lot of misnomers about prayer. John R. Rice defined prayer as just simply asking and receiving. And, um, you know, you just brought up something, you know, uh, that you, know, you talk about punching a Nazi, you know, I, hmm. I would encourage people pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You know, when we think about what went on in World War II, and uh, we think about a, a, a people group, to me, the most persecuted people group that's ever been in the history of mankind, the Jewish people, hmm. that they were just because of their because of their history and genealogy, they are two or three different times in the last hundred years that they've tried to be exterminated. But, you know, miraculously, you know, the, the Jewish people, as they always have throughout history, rallied, and Israel become an independent state in 1948, first time since 8070. Hmm. And, uh, you know, you just brought up, a, you know, something that I think about, and if I think on too often of studying what so many of those people went through, the persecution hmm. that come across Eastern yeah. Europe to their people— it brings me almost to the point of tears because I, I I understand from historical study that there's been no people more persecuted and really systematically tried to be eradicated more than them, and yet they've always came back stronger. And I just appreciate their resilience. Any of my Jewish friends that are out there today, just hmm. love you, love the nation of Israel, and uh, guys like me in your corner. Just you know, saddens me to think about those type of things and you don't hear them and you, know, you don't hear them standing up uh doing all these demonstrations they've been treated poorly they're they are the most poorly treated people across the globe they just work and diligently find a way to get things done mm-hmm. and i have just the utmost respect for them uh, a rabbi i ran into in uh, dallas texas here last year had a huge impact on my life when he was diagnosing some things and some issues um, about society that really just helped me and uh, just you know just to cover like pray right there one simple thing of prayer is you know I I want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem I pray the Lord to send forth laborers I pray the Lord to give me wisdom because I desperately need it hmm. I want warriors of prayer to go to the throne of grace mentioning my name uh, in, in the context of what I believe the Bible teaches is we pray to the Father through the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, just as a you know, as a precursor to the conversations you want to have, uh, those hopefully that's a basis and groundwork for you know what I do think about prayer. And from mm-hmm. there, I'll you know I'll take interview or question from you on <laughs> on what you would like to ask about. So because I am known to talk, you know. No, you're go good. You're good. Conversation. Hey. It's definitely come up with a lot of questions, for sure. I mean, you've 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 hit a lot of points there. Um, first, I want to I want to go back to a lot of things, but first, I want to start off with going to Yahweh on your behalf, uh, prayer warrior. So you're going to have somebody talk to your God on your behalf. Why are you unable to do it yourself? Is it not going to be as sincere if it comes from you? Is there a certain like uh, steps you have to take in order for him to hear it? Doesn't he know everything? That's just 
<laughs> that's just what I have to say on that particular thing. So how does that work for you? I'll, I'll deal with that uh, appropriately and hopefully and give you the answers. What I believe the Bible teaches mm-hmm. uh, prayer is a command from the Lord. The Bible commands us to pray for other saints or other believers. Hmm. Uh, the Bible teaches us that, you know, one of the greatest expressions of love we can give to others is to, you know, go to the throne of grace on their behalf. It's and let me just say, uh, it, it, this might not be to my credit, and hopefully, hmm. just to be a genuine guy. There are times in my Christian life where I'm, you know, spiritually tired, emotionally tired, physically tired, physically sick, and I, you know, the Lord hears the faintest of our cries. I believe that. But when other believers go to the throne of grace, I'm not. There's people that I have greater confidence in their prayer life than my own. And whenever I think of new believers and small children, I want all of them to pray for me because in simple faith, they just believe that the Lord hears them and He does a lot of work in their life. I believe the Lord hears and answers my prayers. I've got specific lists of things, especially when we were making our move to you know South Sudan. In 2012, just Jessica and I wish we'd have wrote a book on the hundreds and hundreds of specific prayers that got answered in such unique ways. And I want everyone to pray for me to protect you know protect me from you know the wiles of the devil. And you know hmm. when you speak of Yahweh, I believe you know obviously in a triune God. I believe that Christ was God in the flesh. Uh, I do believe that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Trinity, yeah. I just want to follow. Yeah, I just want to make sure to clarify that. And I want to follow biblical mandates. Prayer does not um, so much get God in tune with you, but gets a a Christian in tune with God and what his will is for their life and what his will overall is to be accomplished. And that's what I think needs to be the perspective when we come to prayer, and as a Christian, I will be honest. It, you know, a lot of times it's like, "Here's my wish list, Lord, hmm. fulfill that." And that's not the program God's trying to get us on. It's not a health and wealth prosperity gospel. I think it's false. The Lord has an overall plan, and I want to be in tune with what He's doing, and just grateful for what He's done in my life. You know. Well, that's interesting. Especially. The, the... The, you you admit that he has a plan and it's his will, regardless of the prayer. Um, if it's not his will, it's not going to happen. No, no. So, some, some, let, let, let me back up. Uh-huh. There are some things that I think specifically in our lives we do not experience or know or receive because we do not pray. We do not ask. The book of James is very clear about this. The Bible says, ye have not because ye ask not. And when you ask, you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. That's not necessarily sexual lust. That could be wanting and desiring something that God does not want you to have. It's appealing to the eye. It's appealing to the ear. It's appealing to the flesh. But it's not what's best for your Christian life. And the book of James would clear some of that up. There are certain things that I don't think we engage in because we're not on God's program. We can't see him work in our life. Many Christians, unfortunately, Michael, are saved, but they never engage in a fruitful, robust, uh, victorious Christian life. They hmm. wander through life like the children of Israel did in the desert. Uh, <laughs> we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get, <laughs> we'll get there. Um, but I, just, but... I want to make sure I did clarify <laughs> that, that, you know, that, the Lord, the Lord has a specific plan, mm-hmm. as we see laid out in the scriptures. That's going to happen no matter what man does. So why but pray also, at all? Why does He want you to ask for things? Why don't you ask Him and let Him illuminate that to your life? Well, the that, Lord He doesn't answer me. It. That's the problem. He doesn't actually talk back to me. That's, does Does He answer you when you pray? Well, to not him? in an audible voice. Not in an audible voice. Hmm. But, but let me explain how the Lord works, especially in our dispensation of time. The Lord speaks through His Word. Uh-huh. The Lord speaks through other Christians. The Lord speaks through circumstances. Why? And I have had the privilege. Hmm? Why? Why doesn't He just speak to you like 
like a, like he did with Moses, like he did with Isaiah? Why doesn't he just speak to you? That's a great, you know, I think that's a legitimate question, and I really appreciate you asking it because it gives me the opportunity to tell you, you know, that he's mm-hmm. spoken by a more sure word of prophecy. He's spoken by his word. Mm-hmm. His son stepped into time, took away the sins of the world. That's the different, apostles. Though. That's that's a lot different than than speaking to me like if I have a conversation with my wife or you. I mean, for, for one thing, we can have a conversation. I can ask you things. But with Yahweh, it's different. It, he doesn't answer things no, like a like no. typically like a normal human being would understand and need. He answers things in riddles, and, and it's complicated, and you have to figure it out on your own, and you have to read this verse, and you have to read that verse, and it's just it's very confusing. Why not just clear up all the confusion? Calm down, say hello, thanks for the prayer, I heard it, and I'm working on it. Or, yeah, that's not really what I want to happen because it's not within my will. Anything, literally anything, instead of just, you know, riddles and uh, I've never been in riddles with me. I, 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 I've seen the Lord answer with yes, no's, and waits all through my life, Michael. I, but they're I, circumstantial, I, though. Like, he doesn't actually say it physically. Like you, you've prayed for something and then something happens. You prayed for a change and that change happens, but and then that's not a hundred percent. But when it does happen, it's not an actual physical confirmation from him that it's him doing it. It's still an invisible mute guy interacting that you have no idea if it's actually him. I mean, I mean, look at Job. We've got Job. The whole story of Job. Yahweh lets Satan do things. Yahweh lets Satan um, destroy Job. His family and, and 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 him and his livestock and, and everything else. Yahweh allows Satan to do this. How do you know it's not just Satan running amok and Yahweh's just like, well, let's just see if he prays and worship me through the whole thing while I let Satan destroy his life. Stuff like that. Well, I mean, how do you know? Uh, when you when you try to reconcile those things, especially his life is a foundational place people go with the life of Job. Hmm. I'm a guy who's going to. Uh, you know, answer those as limited as I am with knowledge, limited as I am with ability. Mm-hmm. But when I look at the life of Job, look at the context of what it's done throughout history. You look at the life of Job, but because and say, how could a God allow that to happen? I think that's what your question is. Am, am, am I correct? How could God allow those things to happen to Job? Is that just a game he was playing with him? And and I th- you know it, but I want you to answer that is that kind of well what see you're in Job two I think it's, I believe it's Job two three Yahweh says uh, Job still worships me though you have incited you the meaning Satan the devil have incited me against him for no reason which means Yahweh was clearly tricked by Satan in this in this circumstance uh, Yahweh did not uh, need to allow Satan to do all the things that he did he did not. It didn't need to happen, and yet Yahweh allowed it to happen. Yahweh knows everything. Yahweh knew Job's heart before he even started this whole gambling thing with Satan. He knew how that would turn out because Yahweh apparently knows everything. Yet he still allowed Satan to kill people, to destroy a man's life. And then, and then in the end, my favorite part is, oh, he got things back. Yeah, but his kids are still dead. His servants, all those slave people that died, that Yahweh let Satan kill with fire from heaven, fire from heaven, Satan was allowed to use fire from heaven. You know, all those people are still dead. All those lives are still lost. But it's okay because, you know, Job got a new family and everything. That's disgusting to me. That's terrible. The thing is, is- you're, you've missed the whole context from that because you're looking at it through horizontal eyes. You think about the life of Job and what that's done through thousands of years of time to help people to understand that bad things happen to good people and that the Lord was not the one that his own friends believed that Job had done something wrong and they were trying to get him to confess the sin he did not commit. So the misnomer that what we see oftentimes in our modern day Western culture, certain you know big time evangelists that God wants you to be healthy, wealthy, wise, blah blah blah. Hmm. The Lord wanted that from the inception of mankind 
Adam's sin, as we talked in the last program, caused the fall. Hmm. In Job's life, Job Job did everything right, but Satan challenged the fact that men love the Lord just simply for what he did for them. And what Job proved and set a precedent for, for, for you and I, thousands of years after this, are speaking about, was that when the chips are up or the chips are down, he was a man who loved the Lord. And it wasn't that the Lord had to have that from him. It was that Satan in his evil wanted to chew him up, spit him out, mm. to, for him to deny the Lord. The yeah, but Lord Yahweh allowed him to do that. Evil. Yahweh allowed him to chew yeah. him up and spit him out. He said, go ahead. He, for the, here's the thing. The earthly circumstances that you believe and that many people believe and shake their head at, there is a, there is a bigger picture than that. My life has been comforted and strengthened thousands of years after all of them are gone mm-hmm. because their lives are but a vapor for very short. My life has been comforted because that holy man of God stood in the gap, and when things were bad, mm-hmm. things were horrible. The worst possible cases in life that could happen to anyone happened to this man. It wasn't because he was evil. It wasn't because the Lord brought it on him. It was because Satan attacked him. Now there are two different, you know, there's two different things that can go on in the Christian in the Christian life. Now you talk about people that are not saved. It rains on the just and unjust. People that are not Christians murdered every day. You know, but when you talk about a believer in Christ that suffers horrible circumstances in their life, mm-hmm. Satan. Satan is working on an end of temptation to tempt them in every way to damage their testimony so that their influence for Christ is weakened. The the Lord allows trials to strengthen the believer, to draw them to himself, or to chasten and correct them because they are out of bounds and out of focus for what he has for their life. Does Yahweh have the power to stop Satan from doing this? Sure. Why doesn't he? Because man chose an errant way from Adam all the way to the present. So he's like, yeah, the I'm Lord, just going to let this the guy Lord, destroy people's God. lives because no, Adam no, no. didn't listen to me. Because the Israelites Here's didn't listen thing. to me. It, it, he, he settled all that. He settled all that with the virgin birth, the sinless life. Satan's still around, apparently. death. Doing things, right? Burial. I get it, but the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ uh-huh. took care of the spiritual death that man has. Okay. Physical death, he suffered. And and if men will trust that payment for their sin, they have everlasting life. We it, still it will struggle in this world. It didn't stop Satan, and it didn't stop sin. Jesus died to... To what? To appease Yahweh's anger, so everybody can go to, so certain people can go to heaven. It didn't stop sin, and it didn't stop Satan. What is he waiting for? Why is he allowing his arch nemesis and the thing he hates the most, sin, to run rampant in his creation, in his world? Because men like yourself and men like myself and our families are important enough that the gospel message gets to them, so that they have the opportunity. To trust Christ for salvation, and that's, that's where he can just come you. down and and explain it to everybody. That's what he's what missing. If he did? It's twenty twenty one. He can interact with our cell phones, our computers. He can come down and explain his he truth did. to be true. But instead, he he stays hidden. No, he is explaining his truth to Michael Wiseman as we speak. Because his word is forever settled in heaven. His son, the Lord Jesus, came to die for your sin, for my sin. He was buried. He, he didn't bodily need to, though, rose Eric. Dead. He didn't really need to die. I mean, if Yahweh is able to forgive sin without bloodshed, which he, he does, 
uh, a couple of times. He forgives sin without bloodshed. If he's able to do that, then there is no need for Jesus to come down and die. And then when you throw the whole Hebrews 9, uh, 22, where he has to have bloodshed in order to forgive people, that's what he says, but he doesn't act that way. Anyways, that's disgusting. That's a horrible thing. Why doesn't, why, just how about a letter or a flower or a, or a sincere apology, anything but it's a, bloodshed? It's, a, it's a heart, it, it's a heartbreaking thing. But you and I are not the creators. We are uh-huh. the creator. Now I want you to just, just, just let me let me give this analogy and and let me flow for just a couple of minutes, Go ahead. and then I'll give the floor <laughs> back to you. But you think about the fact a creator mm-hmm. that we can't we can't understand fully understand because we're not eternal mm-hmm. has a creation that he creates, and that creation in diabolical rebellion, disobeys and sins against the Creator who made them. I feel like on the other side of that, He has been very merciful to me, very gracious to me, very humbling towards me Mm. that He would give His Son, His eternal Son, to become part of that creation, the God-man, and die for my sin, because of my rebellion. The Lord Jesus didn't come for anything he did. I believe that Christ, the Father, the Holy Spirit, the triune God, is the most loving God, Mm. the true and living eternal God, that there is, there are little g gods that are not real, idols, false. Everything you look at in any other system of ideology There is always some sacrifice that the man has to make in order to appease those gods. Mm -hmm. In Christianity, in Christianity, God made the sacrifice so that man could come free, Mm -hmm. and making Himself with the virgin birth, sinless life, death, burial, bodily resurrection, established that He is the true and living God. The enemies you and I cannot defeat: sin, death. Hell, he overcame from his substitutionary death at the cross. That, yeah. All right. We Good. may not see eye to eye on that, <laughs> but that's where I'm at. I mean, no, I, don't, I don't look at him as a, yeah, as a no, mean God that's looking over you to go, Zzz, I'm going to zap you. You know, I don't. And in a Christian's life, I'll be honest with you, Michael, uh-huh. these are things that Christians do struggle with because they think at times in their life when things get tough, that this is, this is, God's looking at everything I do just to, you know, I'm, I'm being punished on all fronts for this. And oftentimes it's, it's not the case. And in the big scheme of things, in the big picture, no one ever loved us like Jesus did. No one's ever loved us like the Lord. He created us for his pleasure and we have a lot of enjoyment. We're able to have this conversation today what? because of the love of God. And he loves you. I mean, <laughs> he loves you enough to let you hear the gospel, even though you reject the gospel on all fronts. You reject the teachings of Christianity. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah. I know. Um, so we're, but right off the you, bat. I want to ask you this. What do you believe? Before we go any further, uh-huh. I want to know... It, not that you're just a rejecter of Christianity. Mm-hmm. In your worldview, mm-hmm. what, I mean, if you don't mind me answering this on your show, just so I can get a point of reference no, I love it. and I love framework. It. Yeah, I, I want to hear your point of reference, your framework, and what motivates your ideology. And, and if you want to, uh, you know, if you'll allow me to give you some questions, I will. And if you want to continue with your questions at your show, I want to. <laughs> no, I will. I, I, I definitely want to come guys. back to your creator and the, the we can't understand the creator thing. I definitely want to come back to that. But first, let's let, let's go back and forth here with this. Absolutely. Um, I don't believe that there is a creator, all powerful, magical man, woman thing anywhere. I don't I don't believe that. You know why? Because I haven't seen any evidence for that. Yes, I don't know how the universe got here. I don't understand completely how gravity works or or why my toast always falls butter side down. Actually, that's gravity and that's weight. Yeah, I understand that. But there's a lot of things I don't understand. 
And I'm not going to just automatically assert it and, and insert, sorry, I'm not going to automatically insert um, this magical, powerful being. Uh, that we, and then on top of it, to assert that he's loving, he's the most loving character in all of existence, it's just be mind-blowing to me. It's like, have you read the Bible? Have you seen or heard the things he's done? My grandmother is way more loving than this guy. My grandma wouldn't send me to a place of eternity for... for to, to, to be tortured and whatnot, she'd stop that. She'd be like, okay, you know what? Well, this is just, how about a timeout? The eternal couch or something. That you can't tell me a loving God sends people to hell for eternity just for not loving him. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, so that's where I'm at. I'm at, I don't know, and I'm not going to assert or insert anything in that I don't know. Does that make sense? Yes, but you consider yourself more an agnostic in... Correct. Belief or atheist. I would be agnostic atheist because I don't know, and my position at this stance of I don't know is I don't see any gods, therefore atheist. Okay. My question, another question I'd ask is, it, would you be open to change if factual evidence were in front of you, or hmm. are you set your ideas because you believe that you you have enough knowledge to put you at the position that you're at or are you a seeker of truth and seeker of knowledge that if there were evidences you could be persuaded I'm not set in my beliefs I change my mind quite often uh so you know I'm I'm open to facts and evidence absolutely and what evidence and facts would convince me I'm not sure but you know who does know? Yahweh. And Yahweh has yet to present the facts or evidence to convince me, even though he knows what it would be. So at that point, that's just ridiculous as well. Well, here's what I would encourage you. I think I mentioned his character last time. Mm -hmm. uh, in, a case, in cases like yours, I, I look at what Lee Strobel painstakingly wrestled with Mm. And I don't think he was a guy, you know, I, I don't think he would have been a guy that would have just taken a song and a dance. He was not a simple minded guy or it wasn't something, you know, he was a complex thinker, still a complex thinker. And he set out to disprove the Bible, mm. not because he was a, a hater of it. He just didn't believe it to be true. But when he studied the creation and, you know, secular view of evolution he came to the position that creation was true because of the evidence he is hmm. it's guys like him i think you, yeah. you know i think i don't i don't think i have the you know capacity that a lot of those men have i think i'm a basic student and i look at guys like that now in our modern day of bible believers uh, that they would i would consider them more scholarly guys but i think you ought to look in a vacuum if you if if this well, is something you want to go through and Lee look Strobel at, I mean, himself. he looked and mounted. Yeah, I, I watched yeah. a, uh, what was it, The Case for Christ. I think it was a movie or document or some shenanigans. I, I just remember his reason for believing that started him believing was he couldn't create life in a lab. And it's just like, wow, that's why you believe in Yahweh. And it's like, and that's no, what started, that's you, what I understand you're, you're as what take, started his. But you're taking complex ideas mm -hmm. that brought him to simple, back to simple, basic facts. Mm -hmm. I would, I would try to ask him, I would try to take an interview with him on your I, show. I've tried, I've tried, but I, there's definitely a couple books I'm going to be working on. Uh, one of them is his book. So I will be reading his book and, um, talking to it i would read his book it, so. and and i would and here's the other thing mike mm -hmm. a guy like you is an analytical thinker i would i would make out a list of questions oh, i like that like mm -hmm. if you have 200 questions if you if you I got 200 questions mm -hmm. i wouldn't do it to be an antagonist but i would just put i'm seeking of truth mm -hmm. these things are where i'm hung up he may give you evidential you know because my care is that because i believe from the depth of my being, that Christianity is truth. I believe hmm. the Bible is truth. I believe we live in a post-truth era in Western culture where even if it is the truth, people do not care because they have a certain way they think 
things are and their knowledge is superior. So even if you had all the facts, they would dismiss them or lie about them. I don't, from hearing your answer, I don't think that's the position you're in. I think you're in a position of the Bible says what? You may scoff somewhat at the Scriptures. You may do that to some degree. But uh, I do wonder if the evidence was there, laid out from you, if you'll be an honest evaluator of it. The Lord's not trying to hide himself from you. And, he, you know, if what we believe is true, and I believe it is, you, you know, we're going to all face him one day, and, you know, you're going to look at him with these conversations yeah. and others. And I don't, I don't want it. What I don't want, and then I'll say this, and I'm going to give you, obviously give you the floor, be respectful to you and your program, but I don't want, when that day happens, that you look and say, if Eric Porterfield had said A, B, or C, <laughs> that's what could have changed my mind. I want to be the guy that, with what limited knowledge that I have, as a student of the Scriptures and a lover of the Lord Jesus, not the way I should. I'm, I'm not the Christian I should be, but I love the Lord. That I pretty much fed it on the bottom shelf, put references in your hand of people that I thought were had more expertise in the field than I did, to where you had all of that in front of you, where it, it you know, it was there, and I made it available, um, confrontational in the fact that I'm not afraid to defend my positions and go on offense to promote the gospel. But also, you know, my end goal is not to win the debate. My end goal is to see Michael Wiseman and whoever the names are, fill in the blank, hear the gospel and give them every opportunity to receive and believe the Lord Jesus. And with that, I'll give you back the floor to your next point. Well, I, I definitely I care I I, uh, I respect the care uh, not wanting me to burn in hell. <laughs> I, I I thank you for that. Um, you said he's not trying to hide from me. This is a very confusing no. thing. Do you like? Let's just try this. Do you have contact with him to where you could talk to him and maybe have him show up in my life somewhere? Could you tell him to do that? Because yes. he doesn't listen to me, apparently. Apparently, you have that conversations, those, those conversations, that one-way connection. Um, I don't. Could you possibly do that? Is this a thing we could do in real time? He's doing it right now. Okay. He sent his, serv he sent his servant, who is three-quarters of the way across a huge nation with the <laughs> miracles of technology, to be able to tell you that the this is what the Bible says 2,000 years ago. His son came, uh -huh. he died on a cross, was buried, and bodily rose again. What you have asked him to do, he is doing it. Hmm. He, has, he has put people in your life, and I noticed that you had a scholarly guy, I think from Liberty University, uh, hmm. right after I had been on your show. I think a pretty solid apologist in defense of the faith came on. He's time after time putting people in to put answers in front of you. I just wish you would evaluate the evidence and mm -hmm. give him a, a fair hearing because that's how much he loves you. Now, now you think about if you or I were him mm -hmm. and if people you know, not only did not believe him but really have programs you know, and lots of followers – You've got thousands of people, I think, from uh, my secretary or one of my assistants mm -hmm. told me when I let them know it's coming back on your program. You have a lot of people that listen to your program that, mm -hmm. you know, are looking for answers or joining you in in either evaluation to get to the truth mm -hmm. or are just plain scoffing at Christianity. If you were with me or you knew that what we were giving was the truth and people were being led in a different way would you be so loving to, to put your servants there and put them on the hook that they're going to be potentially scoffed at people are going to potentially say bad things to them people may send them negative reviews and oppress their life would you have that kind of love for your followers to let them go through that to reach out to the person that is contrary to you he does love you that much. He has done that. 
and he is doing that. Hmm. He's doing it on multiple occasions. And I just want to encourage you from that perspective, it's not a matter that Eric Porterfield has some secret way to the throne of the Lord. Any born-again Bible believer has that access. I just hope as he's worked in my life the last 25, 26 years, and, and I've had a lot of struggle, a lot of failure, a lot of setbacks, backslid, that you know, he he's able to make me somewhat profitable to for his work to get me in, like yourself, this message and people that are listening to you that maybe are troubled, struggle, have had bad experiences in churches, mm-hmm. Christians have not done them right, and they have a bad idea of God. Mm-hmm. I can just say we are sinful beings, myself as a Christian, I'm as a sinful little man that has ever been on this planet, and the Lord saved me, and each day as it is a struggle to live for him at times, and a struggle to get things done as I'm visually impaired, that the Lord has been the best friend I have oh. ever had, more than my more than my wife Jessica, more than wow. my parents, oh. more than my children, and, wow. and that's that's where I'm at. Well, that, and that, I want you to know that. That I I understand, but it 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 hurts me at the same time when you say that 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 he's a better friend than your own wife and your own kids. Uh, the, these tangible people that are there actually giving you the physical support, uh, mental support, actually being there for you. It, it just baffles me. Um, again, if he, if he really wanted to, he would show up himself. He would stop sending Christians show up. to he talk to Jess, me. He put Jessica in my... He put, he put like I won the sweepstakes, he put mm-hmm. the best woman, the best fit, even though I was blind, into my life who, you know, people in my area, you'd have to know me, make jokes about, you know, I was a pretty spoiled young guy. Hmm. You know, my mother, my aunts doted on me, you know, loved me dearly. My nieces, you know, the women, I've been blessed to have, and, and I really feel bad for people that had had you know, those great sources of women in their hmm. life. But I had the privilege of having that. And then, you know, meeting Jessica and, you know, her looking and evaluating the scriptures to be the wife that she believed the Lord wanted her to be has just been, mm. a, and she believes that it's Oof. been a great completer to me as a man and the greatest blessing of my Christian life along with my children. And, you know, that, but the Lord, by her being a follower of Christ, makes her the wife that she is. Mm to a guy who is a pretty rough character. And I'm just, you know, I'm humbled and grateful for that. Well, you know, because I mean, her I'm, life could have been I'm lucky a whole lot better. With, she, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the same about my you know, life. I mean, I'm you know, married. Her life would be a whole lot better, you know. <laughs> no, I, 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 I completely you're, understand. You're like that with yours, too. Like, yeah. people tolerate me, but they love Jessica, you know, yeah. and I'd say you're probably the same guy. <laughs> man, no, go ahead. Man. You can tell, I'll give you the floor, Michael. No, man, no, I totally understand that. Um, I'm extremely lucky as well when it comes to that. Uh, I'd like to meet her amazing. someday. You ought to come fly out, fly out east, and come and visit us. But continue. Maybe, yeah, maybe one day. Um, but no, I mean, I love my wife. She's amazing. She's an amazing person. I'm extremely lucky to have her. Uh, without her, number one, this podcast wouldn't wouldn't be here. Um, she. You know, she just pushes me into little ways that really help me uh, be a better person. So, no, totally understand that. But I don't... I need your I, wisdom on getting a podcast started. I think I'm going to start <laughs> start a podcast. It's super easy, man. It's it's a lot of fun, though. It's super easy to get it started. Keeping it going is the hard part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting we'll, con- I think the term that you use, everyone's telling me, is make sure that you have consistent content that's yeah. the two words that i think that ring in my mind you need consistent content mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. and it's tough ahead, sometimes but, you, you know you'll get there um <laughs> <laughs> uh but and, and, and again um with the women that is a whole nother topic maybe for another time because how yahweh treats women the bible treats women and what it says about women in there but again that is a whole nother topic and a whole nother time i we are getting closer to the end and i wanted to touch on your your uh your talk about the Creator sure. and why we can't understand Him. Um, that, to me, is very strange. We have this Creator. We are not able to understand sure. Him, but He gets mad when we disobey Him and don't listen to Him. We, but we can't understand. So 
at what I don't point? Know that, I don't. I don't know that we can understand him. We can't understand his ways, correct? His ways are above our ways, and his thinking is his ways above our are thinking. above our ways, and his thinking too. But everything that a man knows, and everything that a man needs to know, or everything a man can accomplish in life, doesn't take him by surprise. I want to make sure I clarify that point: is that we, no matter how much we learn, grow, develop, it'll just you know, the Lord knows all that in a second of time. So I don't want to say that he is, a, 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 you can't understand him w- w- with what knowledge that we could possibly have as human beings. We have way exceedingly abundantly more from creation, from our conscience, and from the cross and the person of Christ hmm. to know that he is real, he is true, and that he he was the one who was the ultimate designer of us. I want to make that definitively clear. There are evidences of that, but knowing him and, you know, knowing everything there is to know about him, we don't have the capacity to do that. I, I want to make a clear definition of that as a precursor. Do you think continue. we can understand that? I mean, for reference, James 1, 9, if any, uh, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So if we lack a certain wisdom, we should be able to ask Yahweh, who has all the wisdom and all the power, to give us this wisdom. And number one, I've asked yeah. for all kinds of things and never received them. Uh, things that... Yes, like I got a, uh, I got a job. Yeah, that was when I was a kid. I got a job. I mean, I was applying. I had, a, I had some background, and I mean, it makes sense that I would get the job, without Yahweh's help. So, I, if I ask Him for things, and the Bible tells me that if I'm asking for Him for for knowledge or wisdom, He'll give it to me. But why am I not receiving it? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All through the book of Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is mm-hmm. the beginning of knowledge. Then you go on further into the book of James. The Bible talks about wisdom. There's two types of wisdom there. There's an earthly wisdom, then there's a wisdom from above. If you'd like to, us to set some time, even a few months down the road, a few weeks mm-hmm. down the road, to look over that teaching in James, there are... There is a wisdom that's earthly, sensual, devilish. There is a wisdom that's from above that is pure, gentle, easily to be entreated. On and on it will go. I think it will be found in the third chapter of the book of James. But with the hmm. wisdom that you need is the fear of the Lord. To f- and that will be the basis of wisdom, knowledge, and it's foundational to build your life the way the Lord would have it to be built and give you the peace and the completion that you need so that the, the foundational answers of who you are, who am I, why am I here, and where am I going, are answered and fulfilled in the person of Christ in the Bible. So the These are f- things that in grade school that... Well, the fear of the Lord doesn't seem like ahead. a very good thing to be starting off with. How about the love? I mean, if Did he's all love, why father? are we... Did you fear your father? Mm, not really. I mean, there were times where I See, said I, I, something, I, I and I was like, okay, I well, I shouldn't have said that. But, I mean, like, I wouldn't fear no, I, him. No, I fear, fear my father at 46 years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm 46 now. I had a birthday in November. But but my fear is not that he's going to bust my hot in if I don't do what towards I'm supposed to. My eternity. fear is not m- – my, my fear towards him is reverence, that I want him to be happy and honored and pleased uh, with what he give me, with his name, that that his life is honored. I, you know, I I fear that. I I don't want to hurt my dad. I don't want to hurt my mom. I, hmm. I've done so many things as a rebellious. I don't know how to say it. Uh, and uh, a gentle euphemism is just a disrespectful punk or a disrespectful hmm. jerk as a teenager. Um, Dave loved me and been so gracious to me hmm. that now as I'm older and have my own children, I just want them to be honored and uh, their lives to be made better because they had me and you know Hmm. without any decision of my own they brought me into this world but as i've grown to honor them because they poured their lives into me and the lord used my dad and mom as an example of his forgiveness and love in my Hmm. life um at times enabled 
but you know, my, I think we talked to my parents, not perfect parents, but just great, wholesome people that I just, my best friends, along with my wife, firstly speaking, and still to this day. So, but that, that's why I asked that. That's the kind of reverence and fear we need to have of the Lord hmm. is that though he's capable to do, you know, it, we deserve, you know, like my dad, there's times that he should have wore me out that he give me so much grace on, probably even more so than he should to the point of hmm. enabling a uh, soft on me, but also a man, certain things he was going to say no to. Hmm. And if he hadn't have said no, what would have happened? You, know, you got your kid going out in the road and a snake is there and you just say, oh, gentle yeah. son, you need to come back here. No, you say, get back here. Danger's present. That's the kind of love the Lord has for us. He doesn't want anything yeah, bad that's for be- you. Well, that's because the dad doesn't I mean, have control have over the that, situation. Saying. Yahweh has control over the situation. If Satan's out in the middle of the road and you're going to him, he can make Satan disappear. Oh, come over here. Come over here. No, no, no. Don't go that way. Poof. There goes the danger. But Yahweh leaves the danger there. Not only that, but Yahweh created the danger. And then on top of that, if you don't love him or respect him or, or, any, or, 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 or believe in him, he's going to throw you in hell. Yahweh is the danger. There's a lot there. There's a lot there that doesn't seem very loving, doesn't seem very compassionate. I mean, would you be okay with your your parents giving you an eternal punishment for the things you've done? I don't think you deserve an eternal uh, punishment know. for the I things know. you've I done. I don't know that I would be okay. I, I'm not saying I would be okay with it. Yeah. And I'm not saying that men are going to be okay with what happens with their eternal abode. Mm-hmm. But I will say this. I will say this. I certainly for the way I've treated my parents, deserved the worst eternal consequences possible. But in their love and mercy for me as a son, just like my Father in heaven, his love and mercy for me gave sacrifice after sacrifice. You want to talk about prayer, you know, seven, 17 years old, I come home and uh, out of my head, not not doing things I should have been doing, I woke up when I shouldn't have been woke up, and my mother's weeping for me. And I did not trust Christ at that time or anywhere that that quickly. But a couple of years down the road, when she probably thought all hope was lost, I picked up the Bible, read 22 chapters of the book of Revelation, hmm. and by the convicting power of the Holy Spirit was brought and illuminated that the faith of my youth was the truth. And I turned to the person of Jesus for salvation. I wasn't one to the Lord. My mother wept me to the Lord. And that, you know, you talk about prayer. I'm almost to the point of tears here, thinking about her prayer, her hurt, her anguish. But going to the Lord, when no one else could reach me as a strong-willed, you know, semi-sharp guy in, hmm. in ways of the world. And many of my friends buried from struggles with substance or struggles in life at 46 i've seen too many of my classmates that i've had to bury Mm -hmm. you know my mother my mother had bibles in my home uh my mother was not so much pushy towards me but her prayers certain circumstances not going the way i thought they should picked up the bible in a casual read and that's the great thing about the lord if you know the questions you ask, if you think you already have the answers to them, I, you know, I don't know what to do to reach you. I don't have some m- magical thing that's going to make spoofle dust come down and um, Michael Wiseman, hearest thou me, that I can reference you to God's Word. I can reference you to what's happened in my personal life. I can reference you to what's happened in history. If you want to study out you know, Israeli history, if you want to study out church yeah. history, if you want to look at those things, miracle after miracle, God's hand has been at work, even in mine and your homeland here in the United States, to bring us to this conversation hmm. for you to trust Christ for salvation. That's you know, that's what I want to see happen here in your life. And if it doesn't, to know he loves you, I care about you, and you know, hopefully we'll bump into you coming to Nevada hmm. sometime or you coming to the East Coast to meet, shake your hand. Maybe fist bump into COVID, but, <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> you know, but uh, you well, take the floor from here. And yeah, I don't think up. you deserve eternal punishment. You, you mentioned that you, you, you felt you deserve eternal punishment. 
Oh, you don't, don't know how evil I am. Well, <laughs> you, can... you don't. You don't know how bad of a man and a young person <laughs> that I was. I, I, the worst part of eternal punishment I, I would deserve. The Lord hmm. restrained His hand from and what, gave me opportunity. I from what I know that. of you. I don't think you would deserve the eternal punishment. Now, there is some things I've, I've, I've watched an interview of you um, where you said a few things where I definitely had a problem with. I, I felt you were very monstrous in your responses, and I was like, wow. Go on, man. That <laughs> but, was so out of context. But, I know where you're going here. Yeah, you know, yeah I figured you that was, By the way, that was planned a month before that interview. Like, I told my wife, I said, you watch and see. Hmm. I said, this She's here today. We confirm this. We're sitting right here where I am right now over this interview. She's sitting in front of me, and I said, "You watch." I said, "One of these days, they're going to bring this up about our children, even though they're five and one. Hmm. They're going to bring at the time. They're going to bring this up." I said, "Here's going to be my answer," and she was like, "Oh, Eric, don't do that." I said, "Oh yeah, I'm going to mess with them." I said, hmm. "Here's what they're going to say." Little did I know. I should have kept my mouth shut and took yeah. it more serious instead of being a snarky, smart aleck type of guy. And a prideful look really got hmm. people all over me over something that's just totally out of context. And for people that know me, that know what a jokester I am, that I, I, that was that one was one that should have handled better. But yeah. no, far, was far from a, a monster. But uh, huh? It was definitely a shocker. Oh, they snookered me. Oh, they snookered me. But, I mean, here's the thing. If I said everything good and right, people on, you know, people on that side of the political hour are just looking for anything you say or well, do. That's besides just like all that, besides a all word, that. Let, let me just say, let me say this. A word misspoken, they will crucify you over. But then Both the sides, people man. on their Both side sides. have sides. these huge beams in their eyes, and there's like, Nothing to see here to the point that they'll do everything to cover it. I'll own mine. Hmm. That, that, there could have been better ways to have said that stuff, but yeah. they won't talk about these serious monstrosities of people that call me, threaten me, hmm. call me all hours of the day, all hours of the night, before hmm. and after that, yeah. that when I was not speaking anything to them, that well. literally threatened my safety as someone who can't see. Called me things that I mean I'm got you know I've got pretty thick skin but they called me things that I was like oh my stars mm. you, do you eat out of that mouth yeah I, I mean I've got a lot of it recorded Michael I'll let you air it on your program but yeah I mean <laughs> that that I own that stuff I don't yeah. care I just go on and live my life but you can you can go to that it's fine I just want to make sure I get that no, I just you. I wanted to See? use that as a reference you know that to me that was a pretty horrible thing to to even joke about um, but. Regardless, that to me doesn't qualify you for an eternal punishment. I think you can be forgiven for saying things like that. Like you said, you were joking. You really don't believe it. You obviously haven't drowned your kids. So you know, I don't. And I my don't daughter feel... is a good swimmer now. My daughter's a good <laughs> swimmer. Terrible. My son That's so bad. That's my, we so got bad, her. Eric. Oh I wanted God. to get. I was going to get her in a Noah's Ark bathing costume, a oh, bathing no. suit, and chase her around the pool with the local oh, no. at the local uh, fitness center. And have her jump into the pool and say "yee," and then say, and then do a big political commercial about yeah, it. Don't, don't yes, antagonize. And I laughed don't about it. We decided not to do it. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, Eric, you're oh. laughing. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. Uh, the door swings both ways, though. You know, on both sides of the political spectrum, I don't, I really don't want to get into politics here, but it does swing both ways. There's a lot of division, and I feel like we are both on complete opposites here, but we can still have a complete civil conversation about our beliefs and, and, and how we differ. So I sure. want to keep it at that, and I, I I really don't want to get back into that. I just wanted to use that as a reference. <laughs> Michael said, as, no, you know, no, we're stopping <laughs> here. You go ahead and take the floor and wrap us from here. We'll get on faith. We'll get on that interview sometime. I'll talk yeah. to you about it. I'm going to put it on. When I have my podcast, I'm going to I'm going to, I'm going to draw down on all that stuff. I'm, yeah. I don't have anything to hide in that, and here's the thing. I'll say this, and then I'll let you go. I think it's a very unfair question, you know, that I have a five-year-old and a one-year-old at the time be t talking about their sex life. I mean, that's uh, we're we're worried mm -hmm. about you know getting them a, a stuffed animal and uh, a, a, a set of Legos or something like that. I mean, that's not you know, it's not really a fair question. I mean, and the proper answer to that question, mm -hmm. if I was being serious, would be look that our goal was not 
just to raise straight kids. Our goal is to raise Bible-believing Christians to give them every opportunity to serve the Lord. And you know, what the Lord says about human sexuality is that man, woman, you know, husband and wife. Mm. Uh, that's simple to me. Even if a person's not a Christian, it's contrary to you know, it's contrary to normal. It's contrary to nature. It's, and I, I it's again, basic. I totally disagree. And that's a whole other conversation we can get into. But obviously, I mean, there's a whole bunch there. But I just want to get you to maybe clarify that while we're here. We can just clarify that you're not going to drown your kids if they turn out gay. <laughs> I just want to, uh, while we're here. <laughs> I would, I'm about to make another smart aleck statement on that. But I'm oh, not, do that. I'm don't not going to get, I, I, I will say this. Hmm. I'm not going to get into anything about, my my kids' sex life when they're six and two. I, I, I'm I knew that stuff like that was going to be asked, but that's yeah. not that's not something I'm going to get into and discuss with, with okay. people. Well, that's I, I'll just say this: my goal my goals for my children are they love the Lord, and if they got out into the worst type of sin, I would want to pray for them, love hmm. them, hmm. Um, get the Bible to them, get them the help they need. And when I look at people that are confused, wrapped up in their sexuality, a lot of times you see abuse. You know, you don't just wake up one day and that happens. Many of these people have been abused. A lot of these people have struggles. That, have again, that's a whole other conversation. I really don't want to get into that right now because that, that could go on for a long time. <laughs> But you've tapped the keg on that one. Bring me we'll, back for that. I'll, exactly. I'll do we'll that put a pin I in wanna, that. I want to help people. And I 100% want to mm-hmm. talk about that. I, that's our next conversation. We'll do that for sure. Um, we'll talk about homosexuality, gayness in the Bible, and whatnot. I love I'm gonna it. get. I'm gonna get a video. I'm gonna zip to you with Beth in a bathing suit with Noah's Ark and chase her to jump in the pool. I don't and want I'm that. I'm gonna say, "Do Just you say swim?" That. I'm saying it right now. I don't and then want when that. Beth, Eric. When Beth starts nope. swimming, when Beth starts swimming laps at six years old, they'll say, "Oh, okay." Both of his <laughs> he takes swimming very seriously, so both of his kids will already be swimmers before they hit puberty so we don't have to worry oh, man. So, but go ahead i'll get i'll, I'll get going and we'll get to laughing and getting into jazz oh, so we man. better we better get back we better get back in our lane <laughs> all right well with that i'm, <laughs> I'm gonna close it out you um, have sixty thousand followers you're liable to hit a million on that podcast i better oh, have mine first and then oh, come man. into your second oh my god made made rachel made rachel anderson famous yeah <laughs> 15 right, million right. hits, and then they started telling people to fire her. But no, go ahead. <laughs> close with prayer. <laughs> what would you ask me about prayer, my eternal? Oh, man. You did think I deserved eternal, to be eternally separated from the I, Lord. I won't go back to that. Regardless of all that, I don't think you deserve eternal punishment, but we do have to close it out. We are at the end here. Um, I do have a bunch of stuff to get sure. done today. So, But I love the conversation. I really appreciate your time and um, the, everything. I really do. Um, and we'll definitely have to do this again sometime. And I'll keep in touch, man, for sure. You you do that. Thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate you having me on. It's been all my right. privilege. Appreciate you. Wish you all the best, man. You too, man. Please don't send me that video. <laughs> Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. 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 And that's all the podcast there is for you today. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard and want to help keep the recording light on, simply go to patreon.com forward slash BSW the podcast and sign up to be a supporter of the show. Your episodic tithes of a dollar or more will give you early access to each episode, access to unaired conversations, and much more. For the latest giveaways, BSW swag, and a peek behind the scenes, head over to the show's ever-evolving webpage at thebiblesayswhat.com. Thanks to the cosmic powers of the internet, it is now possible to buy me a beer or coffee online. Simply go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash BSW the podcast and click the appropriate buttons. If you can't support the show monetarily, please like, share, and or leave a review. As always, you can find me at the Bible Says What Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Instagram pages. You can also reach me at bswthepodcast at gmail.com. And no matter which platform you use to listen to your podcasts, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on the next episode. Until then, would you kindly pick up your Bibles and read them?
I send out a lot of emails, and here are just a couple responses that I've received recently. Hey Michael, thanks for the invite. I do not think this is the right time for me to jump into that, but thank you for thinking of me. Hi Michael, thank you for reaching out. I listened to a few episodes of your podcast and checked out your website. Your story is interesting, and I think what you're doing is very worthwhile, despite the fact that I don't believe the same things as you. It's important for people to examine and dissect their beliefs and the book that they learn them from. Unfortunately, I don't do very well in conflict, even debate-style conflict, so I'll have to decline, but thank you for your offer. Greetings, Michael. Thank you so much for your interest in having Dr. So-and-so to speak with your community. Unfortunately, Dr. So-and-so is not available to speak with your community. Thank you for your consideration. Occasionally, when I send out an email to have a guest on the show, I'll get thrown into their email list and I'll get all of their responses to their uh, followers. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. Right after a conversation I had with a guest, she went on to her email list and put out this gem. She says, Yesterday I was ambushed in an interview by an atheist who misrepresented himself as a Christian podcaster. I think I held my own, but he did everything he could to try to make the Bible look ridiculous and to throw me off. Before the ambush, he had encouraged me to share about my new book, The Special Blessings Prayer. My guess is that he wants his atheist followers to launch an online attack against me, which is easily done on Amazon. All they have to do is bombard my book page with negative one-star reviews. If you could, either write a positive review if you've read the book, or thumbs up the existing reviews, that will help mitigate against any damage they might do. If you have a thumb, you can help build a bulk work against an atheist attack at such and such and such and such. Just scroll through the five stars and click helpful until your thumb hurts. If you see any hatefulness, just click report abuse. Join me in praying that God will redeem the situation. Pray a hedge of protection around my life and ministry that this plan to steal, kill, and destroy will not stand.